what we're learning about cancer as we uh, do genomics and really begin to understand uh, cancers better than we did in the past is that the way we have designed clinical trials does not fit with the reality that the science is unveiling. And uh, so we need to redesign clinical trials to fit the scientific reality. And that specific reality is that uh, the genomic aberrations drive cancer. That's number one. And number two is that each person's tumor is different and each person's tumor is complicated. So we can't put people in a box the way we used to. I think um, when you're looking at different stages of cancer, you may have a completely different biologic environment in that cancer. And so translating from one stage to another, it might give you some information, but you would be missing a lot of information. Uh, so I think we're um, uh, learning that not only are there uh, a lot of differences between each patient's tumor, but even in one patient's uh, tumor, as the course progresses, um, there are very uh, distinct um, alterations. And we need to address uh, what is there at the time. So it's the right drug for the right person but it's also at the right time. So the technology to make that assessment is very important. Uh, the technology that has really exploded is the genomic and next generation sequencing technology. But now we can do it not just on tissue, but we can do it on blood tests, uh, something called the liquid biopsy. And that opens up whole new doors uh, to doing um, uh, additional testing on patients because now we don't have to biopsy them every time. We can also take a blood test. The whole area of artificial intelligence is um, really interesting. I'm not quite sure that we're there yet, but we're very close. And um, this is going to be absolutely transformative. So one of the things about having all this information is that the information is so complex that it's beyond the ability of any human being to analyze it. Uh, but this can be analyzed by computer systems. and. Um, computer systems that n not just look at the information but can also learn from the information. And we're right at the cusp of being able to do that. Well, <clears throat> the Shiva trial was presented last year, actually in my session, and it's a very important trial uh, because it was the first randomized trial. But the problem with the Shiva trial is not the Shiva trial. The problem is the way people overinterpreted uh, the Shiva trial. And I think um, even the first author uh, would agree with that. Uh, so the Shiva trial um, showed that um, it was not, it didn't meet its endpoints. Uh, but 80% of the patients were treated with single agent mTOR inhibitor, Everlimus, or single agent hormone modulators. And I think we can conclude from that trial that single agent hormone modulators or mTOR inhibitors do not work in patients with advanced, heavily pretreated cancer. The SHIVA trial proved that definitively to extrapolate from that to say that precision medicine doesn't work is what people are doing, and that makes no sense scientifically. So it's designing trials the right way, but also making the right conclusions um, from those trials. And I think we have to look at what are the conclusions. So the Shiva trial had very important conclusions, but we can't jump from one conclusion 
and say all of precision medicine doesn't work. Uh, I mean, I can give you hundreds of examples now of where precision medicine does work. Um, but I don't want to extrapolate from where it does work and say it works everywhere. And in the same way, we can't extrapolate from a limited couple of drugs that didn't work out and say, oh, the whole field doesn't work. We need good scientists doing good science and also people reporting that science in a way that is the right way to see the trials.